digital inclusion space, which means that we try our best so that everybody can use the internet, is of my colleague Harsh. Harsh, like every engineer, engineering graduate, graduated from college and got placed into one of the top IT companies. Over a few years later, he realized that due to some genetic complication, he had started losing his vision. I met Harsh when I started working on accessibility campaign and to learn a little bit about how we can develop and how we can help people, uh, help, help make IT products more accessible in nature. And believe me, Harsh used to curate content for us. He would read a lot of documents, a lot of uh, reports by himself using a screen reader. A screen reader software that actually enables Harsh to go through all the content, everything on the internet, and he could access mobile applications and websites, everything by his own, independently. Professionally, I'm a designer. I work in the UI UX space, where we create different types of mobile applications and products. But when I started working at a corporate, I was constantly questioning myself. As a designer, I'm supposed to be something creative, a problem solver. What am I doing here? At the corporate, you know, you just go to the job, come back home, that's all you do. <laughs> so this is when I started working toward accessibility and digital inclusion. I ran a lot of campaigns, worked with a lot of international clients. We, as a company, we started pitching our clients to make sure that they can also include certain features in all of their products that help them with inclusion, inclusive products. When I say inclusion, I specifically want to draw your attention to people who have special needs. The, the first picture that you see, the girl is using a digital version of Braille. Braille everybody has heard of, right? People in olden days, a lot of years back, used to, you know, kind of use those perforated grips which help them to read. There are a lot of digital versions of Braille coming. Just like the keyboard, this Braille device gets connected to your desktop and laptop so that visually challenged people can get all the output that they want in the Braille format. The second picture that you see is a man is using a sip and puff tool. With the control of his breath, he can operate his digital devices that he wants. The way he breathes actually helps him to use his mobile phone or laptop. Not just these people, there are millions of people worldwide who are using multiple types of innovative products to use their digital services every day, to operate day to day life. For us, it's all, uh, you know, we're ungrateful people. We never think about how internet is impossible, uh, important for us. We never think how important it is when you can, you know, make your uh, delivery, food delivery and get it at home. But some people really cannot do it. It is extremely difficult for some people. There are about 2.8 crore people in India who, has per who are persons with disabilities. About 2.8 crore, not a small number. To make it more insightful, let me show you another picture. The population of people with disability is about three times the population of Bangalore city. In another words, I can say it's almost a sum of Mumbai plus Delhi plus Hyderabad. Big cities, right? There are big numbers. But wondering why we never see them. We all think, you know, yaar, humko to kabhi dikhte hi nahi hai, log yahan par bhi kabhi itne honge nahi. Why? Because the places are not accessible and inclusion. There's very limited inclusivity in our culture. Today, if I invite you at a party after this event, imagine the party has, is at my apartment on the 8th floor. We're going to have great food, amazing music, everything is going to be perfect. But the apartment doesn't have a lift. Would you show up? Would you show up to my party on 10th floor without a lift? No, right? Let me tone this down for you. If the apartment was on 2nd floor, Probably any of you, I mean, two floors you can walk up, right? But if there was somebody in the room who was either on a wheelchair or a pregnant lady or someone who might have a fracture recently, right? 
Should I still expect them to walk up two floors to come to my party? That's unreasonable. This is what happens in the digital space as well. And that is why we hardly see people taking or your people participating on the digital platforms even. This is why I started to work under bringing more inclusion into digital spaces. Thank you.